In the two years to 2009, Tata Motors, one of India's leading car and truck companies, made two dramatic strategic moves. First, a major world-class acquisition, and second, the launch of a revolutionary new car. We'll look at both of these shortly. But these two moves were made against a backdrop of major strategic problems in the global car market and also new competition in Tata's home market, India. It was truly a tricky time for Tata Motors. As cases four and five explain, the world car industry was experiencing a difficult period from 2008 onwards. And Tata Motors was a small player by world standards. To build its presence globally, Tata Motors acquired the Jaguar Land Rover company from Ford Motors in 2008 for 2.3 billion US dollars. Initially, the new purchase appeared to be a strategic mistake because it made a loss in 2009. However, JLR returned to profitability in 2010. It had a range of successful new models in the premium end of the world car market, and its UK manufacturing and management base was so successful that Tata was able to announce further major investments in JLR in 2011. But the same turnaround had not been achieved at the time of writing this case at its other major strategic initiative, the launch of the Nano. Although Tata wanted to launch its new cheap car, the Nano, into the Indian car market in 2008, it was only finally able to do this in 2009. There had been a dispute over land ownership that held up factory construction. The Nano itself was quite revolutionary. The world's cheapest car priced around 2,000 US dollars, 1 lakh Indian rupees. It was aimed at the growing domestic Indian car market, and initially buyers were very enthusiastic. But by late 2010, sales had slowed considerably. There were several reasons. First, there were reports of the Nano spontaneously catching fire. And second, some doubts over Indian market demand for this particular low-priced model. All this was taking place against an Indian car market that was growing strongly. But where Tata's market share in cars remained small. However, the company was dominant in the Indian truck and bus market, where it had major strategic strengths. The full case itself goes into more detail on its strengths in the car and bus market, and also explains the increased competition faced by car in Indian domestic car markets from companies like Toyota, Ford and Renault. Overall, Tata Motors had recovered its profit position in 2010, but it still faced some tricky strategic decisions over the next few years.